it's brutal out there. This is one of those times where we have to talk about what's going on in the Solana NFT space, even if we don't want to, even if there's an, an ugly truth or that we have to confront with doing that. And that's what this video is going to be all about. This video is going to be talking about what is happening with Solana NFTs. A lot of the calls that I've made over the last month or two haven't been right. And that's just kind of part of life. Sometimes some unexpected stuff happens like market dips, like retractions. But there are some shining rays of light through all of this darkness that you should be able to focus in on, such as how far we've already come in such a short amount of time, as well as where we can actually find the real diamonds in the rough. There are some projects that are doing some really, really great things because they're ignoring the noise, and maybe you should too. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to explore what's going on in Solana NFTs, where we think it's going to go, and what some of the special projects are really doing building. Let's go. Look, it's, it's not pretty out there. I think it was a month or two ago that I was predicting that geckos would have an 100k floor by now, right? And where are they really at? More like a 1k floor. That's why I say things like, this is not financial advice. You should always do your own research uh, and don't buy things because I'm buying things. Buy things because you legitimately want them or believe in the project and do what's best for you in your situation. Uh, and, and that's true. None of those things are things you should. I'm just a guy on YouTube uh, who happens to be very passionate about these things and tries to be very thorough when I do research. But every now and then the market goes in a different direction than what I predict it will do. And that's just kind of part of life. I think a lot of people right now uh, felt similarly to the way that I felt about a lot of these projects. And what we're seeing right now is a massive retracement or a massive contraction, not just in Solana NFTs, but across the entire crypto sphere. Everything in crypto right now is bleeding. Everything is just going down really, really bad. And I want to take a moment to say that uh, there's a lot of depression and anxiety that comes along with this. A lot of inexperienced investors, younger people or older people, whether it is uh, new to crypto in general. This year, we saw a huge influx of capital in crypto in general because, you know, a handful, a tiny handful of people you know, bought Dogecoin at the right time or bought Board Ape Yacht Clubs at the right time or SMBs at the right time and in a short amount of months turn into millionaires. Those are not, that's not the rule, you guys. That's the exception. Uh, and everybody else kind of barreled in after the fact. They either bought into those coins or those projects at the very top or on the way up uh, where they missed, you know, the original uh, catapult of percentage of yield or they're trying to mint the next one, and there isn't a next one. That's why they're the OGs. That's why they're the best, and, and they're the most desirable. And there's just this it's tremendous, you could just feel it in crypto Twitter right now, that everybody is really, really anxious about holding these gigantic bags of trash. Uh, and, and they're down. They're really depressed. And I want to tell you right now, um, if you're really struggling with this, if you feel really bad with it, uh, you you should really consider getting some help and talking to professionals about it. This is not health advice. This is just coming from an average Joe like me. Uh, I speak to a therapist weekly, and it's really, really helpful. It helps me manage things. Um, I did not overinvest in any of these things. I'm doing just fine in that scenario because I've been through these cycles before. I went through crypto winter um, you know, at the end of 2017 all the way through 2018, 2019. I know how these market cycles work. They go up really big and they come down just as big. And that, that rush down is really tough to swallow. So uh, I just want to say like right now, if, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel angry at other people right now or angry at yourself right now because of the situation that we're in, um, there are some things that you can do to cope with this. And that really starts with, you know, just checking in mental health. And it is not a shameful thing to say like, okay, Maybe I feel a little out of hand right now. I'm not acting like myself and I need to seek some help. So that is uh, a very important thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, with that being said, we need to take a look at what's going on with the market as a whole. We're going to take a look at Soul Analysis, Solana Floor, take a look at some of the key projects and where I see some shining rays of light. We're also going to talk about some newer projects that entered into the space, whether they're about to mint or they just minted, and they're actually doing some really promising things. The community's are looking really good. So without being without further ado, let's jump on the board. 
So we're starting off our venture today with soulanalysis.com. Now, some of these numbers are so staggering and jaw-dropping that they almost give me pause and skepticism and make me wonder if they're actually accurate. For instance, the overall market cap of Solana NFTs as of this recording is $517 million, which is just significantly down from where we were just a few weeks ago. I think we got this low sometime around October. It was like in the 500s. Then in almost no time at all, it went right back up to 900 million bucks, headed towards a billion. And then now, you know, we're seeing a minus 57% drop uh, back down to 517 million. And this is just so staggering that it makes me wonder like, well, there's, is that is that right? Um, because I do expect to see some big numbers, but when I see things like it says the DGen Ape Academy price change is down minus 91% in 24 hours, the only way that I think that that might actually be true is because the DGen Apes had some massive sales over the weekend. Uh, we saw a 3,000 soul sale. We saw some 420 soul sales, you know, uh, th these are things like, you know, this was like 600 something thousand dollars at the time that that sold. So when I see that, you know, the volume uh, in seven days was 1.3 million, that gives me real a whole lot of skepticism because one sale alone accounted uh, for half of that. Then a second sale tacked on almost another hundred thousand. So it actually wonder it makes me wonder, like, that doesn't seem right, actually, because like in two sales alone, that would eat up, you know, more than 50% of what this they're saying happened in seven days. So I don't know how accurate this is, but these floor prices here are actually pretty accurate. So when we see things like Solana Monkeys headed down below 100, when we see the DGen Apes now falling into the 20s, look, it was only two months ago that the DGen Apes had a floor of like over 100, and the Solana Monkeys, I think, at one point were like over 300 soul. Uh, to see these dipping is is just at the rate that they're dipping is is kind of staggering. Um, even Thugbirds with a floor of 27.8, Aurori 17. But look, we talk about these like rays of shining light. Enter Shadowy Supercoders or the Genesis Go project. Genesis Go is so phenomenal, you guys, because it's not just an NFT that brings some special utility. This entire project is designed to support the Solana ecosystem, to, to support the Solana blockchain. They are literally helping DAOs or other organizations stand up their own validators, stand up their own RPC nodes, and decentralize the Solana blockchain and scale the Solana blockchain. That's literally the point of this entire project. In fact, you know, we're seeing other DAOs are partnering, like well-known DAOs, like the DGen DAO, they partner with Genesis Go in order to stand up their validator, and in no time at all, those validators are finding a significant amount of success. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about these rays of shining light. It's easy for you as an average investor who only you know thumbs through Twitter, gets 140 characters, digest that and moves on to the next thing. It's easy for you to only see a headline and think that that's all there is to the topic. That's like, that's it. That's just, uh, you know, stocks are down, crypto's down. And that, that's the end of the discussion, right? SMB is down. DJ Apes are down. Thugbirds are down. That, and you think that's just where it ends, right? Th but that's the thing, is when these types of dips happen, when these types of, like, contractions happen, the projects that ignore that and just keeps doing what they're doing, where they just keep building and building and staying committed to their community and staying committed to their Solana ecosystem staying committed to other projects, those are the projects that don't get weeded out during these contractions. That's the thing that I want you to really focus on right now is there are projects like these three that I just mentioned, the actual blue chips of Solana NFTs, the actual OGs, that are unfazed by this because they're about so much more than just NFT go up, NFT go down. They, they are. And... There are projects that are launching right now or have launched in the past. They're absolutely getting weeded out because they're so focused on you know themselves or all the wrong things, not their community, not Solana ecosystem, but just price talk, just floor talk, or just airdropping shit coins on you that do actually nothing, uh, airdropping you NFTs that do actually nothing. They're so focused on that type of stuff just to maintain hype 
that they are not going to make it. That that's just that's just the I mean again, not financial advice on any of this stuff, but I'm extremely bearish on projects that are not focused on the big picture, which is, you know, how are they going to develop for their community? How are they going to transcend the digital world? How are they providing benefits to the ecosystem as a whole? And when I look at what SMB is doing, what DJ Apes are doing, what ThugDAO is doing, uh, and many other projects for that matter, like, like I don't know, is it DeGods or DeGods? I've never understood how you actually pronounce this, but those guys are doing some special stuff right now. Um, and of course, Genesis Go is just, I mean, they they came out of nowhere. They are now looking at number three on solanalysis.com and rightfully freaking so. Uh, super impressed with that project to the absolute max. And if you're part of that team and if you're listening right now, thank you for being you and thank you for providing benefits to Solana. Uh, we needed you and you, you've been there for us. You've been there for the biggest DAOs in the communities in a really big way. So that's, that's, I mean, I think that's the biggest, you know, it, it's ugly out there right now. You see a whole lot of red. And um, if you're looking at your, your portfolio right now, you're, you're probably feeling a little worried because it's holiday season and it's tax season coming up. And, you know, I, you know, I don't even want to get into that stuff because it's big time, not financial advice, but that's kind of it. But wh- where are some really positive things? I'm going to jump over to SolanaFloor.com right now. And I want to stress right now, uh, Solana Floor is actually launching their own NFT project on Wednesday that's going to give you access to their pro tools. I am sitting down with Waza, the creator of Solana Floor, later today to actually get a little behind-the-scenes look at how Solana Floor Pro is going to work, and I'm going to try to record and get you a video midweek that actually shows you the benefits of Solana Floor Pro because I, you know, just talking to him behind the scenes a little bit, I think it's going to be some really cool stuff, especially if you're into data analytics and understanding what's really going on in the ecosystem. So, you know, again, if you're just looking at, at some charts right now, it, it might not look very pretty. I'm going to pull up uh, some of the big ones here, like uh, SMB, DGN Apes, Thugbirds, Geckos, Penguins. I think that'll be enough to start with here. So if I jump over here to SMB, what do we see here? Well, we see the number of owners is trending down a little bit. Not a lot. Actually, you know, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's zoom to something like one month. Now, again, just kind of a little preview. You see this pro right here? They're actually going to show you all data uh, if you have the pro subscription, which is really cool. So zooming out a little bit, uh, we see overall, if we're looking at a month, the number of tokens listed is relatively flat with a slight downward slope. The number of owners, again, uh, relatively flat with a slight upward slope. This is a bullish indicator uh, as... The, and to me, I want to stress this right now. This is one of the biggest things about this ray of shining light. This is one of the projects that is truly ignoring any of the noise. Nobody here is talking about the price. They don't really care. Uh, they're just here to build for the ecosystem. And SMB represents Solana uh, maybe more than any other project in the NFT space. I recently did a TikTok video that basically said, you know, SMB, DGN Apes, Thugbirds, these are the projects that represent Solana, and to bet against them is to bet against Solana itself. And I stand by that, uh, even if I got a lot of comments from people who don't follow me or know me uh, and said that I was just shilling my bags. I'm not. I legitimately am a long-term holder of these projects and believe they're doing all the right things. But what I think is really happening here is when you see these floor prices trend down and a little bit of listings trending upwards right here, I think what you might be seeing is people who held multiple SMBs are starting to let go some of their multiple SMBs because when you see the number of owners trending upwards, I think what's happening is, or at least the number of unique owners trending upwards is as this price is dipping, people who have always wanted an SMB now have the opportunity to get in. And that's why the number of unique owners is growing in SMB. And this is actually a really good thing that we are distributing the ownership of this project. So the price coming down gives people, the the people who, uh, you know, maybe like people minted six SMBs and now's a good time to offload three of them, you know, take some profits, get ready for tax season, get ready for holiday season, but also give some new fresh blood to come into the project. I think that might be what you're seeing happening right here. And that trend kind of carries along for the other projects in the space. Let's take a look at the DGN Apes. Again, I'm going to zoom out to one month. So 
Uh, they've had a little bit of a different trend, a little bit of a different trend, largely because of the Degen Trash Panda drop. There was a strong incentive to hold so that you get the mint tokens in the last month, uh, and that's kind of what you might be seeing here. So we see number of tokens listed uh, has trended upwards. They are sitting at around 15% of the number of tokens listed, which overall is low, but you kind of want to see it get below 10% at some point. The number of unique owners is also kind of trending downwards a little bit. Degen Apes have always had uh, kind of a unique situation where there was a, uh, a small number of users who held a large number of Degen Apes. But uh, I, I think, especially in recent history, you are seeing a lot of new people, like right in this chunk right here, we're seeing a lot of new people who are actually entering the Degeniverse. If you're on Twitter at all, you see it every single day, all day long. People are saying, finally was able to get into the Degeniverse, finally was able to get a Degen Ape. Um, you know, the prices dipping into the 20s gave me the entry point. I'm in it for the long haul. And it's a similar thing to SMB, where this price dip is allowing people to take profits, people who held multiple apes to take profits and also allow new fresh blood to enter the Degeniverse, which again is a really exciting thing. Um, the concentration here, I think, is what throws the Degen apes off a little bit. They have a huge concentration in the floor ranges, and then it's super thin in the mid ranges, and then a huge number of people who have listed. Th these are prices here, by the way. So this is the number of listed based on price. Uh, and then a huge number of like mythics that are listed for very expensive. So I think what we see is just a large, a big barrier right here for the Degen apes to get through their floor. Um, once they get through their floor, then it becomes ice like razor thin uh, to get all the way up towards, you know, where the mythics and the large concentration of very expensive apes are. So basically what we have is we're seeing a lot of people who held multiple floor apes uh, are now listing them. They're heavily concentrated in this like sub 100 range. And, you know, especially now that we're seeing them in the 20s, people are starting to gobble them up, which is nice. We're seeing the sales bot moving a lot quicker for the Degen Apes. Um, and that's, you know, that's what's going on there. I think it's a similar pattern to what's happening with SMB, although maybe not as pronounced because of all of the stuff that's been going on with the Degen Trash Pandas. Now, I am going to talk about the Degen Trash Panda and the mint that was botted and manipulated um, by somebody who was within the Degen Ape community, but I'm not going to do it in this video. I am actually sitting down with Pit the Panda later today to record an interview, and I'm hoping to release that tomorrow. So we're going to talk all about the botted mint, what went wrong, uh, what's being done to fix it, and how this impacts the Solana ecosystem and the Degeniverse as a whole. So I want you to know, I am not ignoring this conversation at all. I've been very vocal about it in both the Discord as well as on Twitter. Uh, but we are going to put this on YouTube. I wanted it to be its own dedicated content, and I wanted to have the right people on the call to do it. I don't see anybody more right for this conversation than Pit the Panda. So know that that is coming probably tomorrow. All right, next one, Thugbirds. Let's zoom out to one month more. Uh, again, kind of similar trends here. We are seeing a number of listed tokens sort of on the rise. Uh, I think there was, you know, when they announced that they got a really, like, a significant partnership, right? They got Wiz Khalifa and the Taylor Gang hooked up. I think a lot of people actually listed to try and, you know, catch that bull run up and try and get some money going on there. But similar pattern, again, the number of unique holders is relatively flat, but with an upward slope uh, as people are very excited to enter the flock. They, again have been building, 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 much like the Degen Apes much and like Thugbirds. Both of those projects launched merch recently. Very, very cool. Um, anybody could go along and purchase the Thugbirds merch, as far as I'm aware, which looks really exciting. Uh, the Degen Apes was walled off. You did have to be uh, connect your wallet to the main Apentosh, and then from there you could get the link to go buy merch. So they did. the Degen Apes did try to make the merch purchase exclusive to ape holders, which, you know, I think that personally, I think that's pretty cool. Um, similar situation, similar distribution with the thug birds right now, uh, heavily concentrated in the floor, some nice listings at the high end of things, very, very thin in the mid tier. And again, we're seeing this every single day where there's so many people 
who are taking advantage of this dip because they've wanted to enter these blue chip projects for a long time. And now they finally have the opportunity to because they see the long term picture. Uh, you know, this, if you're, if you're charting out, hang on, hang on once here, I had, I had to pull it up on the screen. This is the Solana one month chart. Look at this. Uh, about a month ago, we were sitting at around 250 to $260, a Solana token today. We're sitting at roughly 181. It looks pretty bad, right? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty significant loss of $70 a token. And, and here we are. And that makes you feel a little bit of a gut punch. Then you see, you got these huge swings in the mix too, right? Whoa, it's, I mean, this is super volatile out there right now. But right now, this trend, if you're looking at a one month chart, makes you feel pretty bad about things. If we zoom out to three months, okay, feel a little bit better. We're still in the green. If we zoom out to one year, oh, that's how far we've come in a year. It was at a dollar eight or a dollar eighty a year ago. A dollar eighty to 180 today. Basically an 100x gain in a year. Now, why is that? Why, why, why is that? It's because Solana is great. It is. It is a great blockchain. It is fast, it is cheap, and it is easy to use. It might not be easy to build on, and it might be a little costly to decentralize because of the way validators work, but they've already come out and said that they're going to significantly reduce the cost of how validators operate in the near future. They said that, uh, I think, a couple days ago in a tweet. They got really, really excited uh, because the DGN Apes, a community that I'm very involved with, as well as SMB, as well as ThugDAO, I'm in all of those communities, we were all really, really excited because we all spun up validators to help the Solana ecosystem. If you haven't watched my video on what staking your Solana means, how you can earn more Solana, how to stake with a validator of your choice using either Phantom on desktop or some mobile wallets, even with a Ledger Nano. I recorded a video last week that walks you through the process and teaches you what staking is. And I'd really encourage you to check that out. So, I mean, there are things that are happening with Solana right now that are just constantly improving. And maybe one of the biggest bullish indicators that we see in Solana is the fact that it is very, very ripe for the gaming industry. We see some big games that are going to be launching in the near future. Things like Aurori, things like Star Atlas, and many, many more that are play to earn. Uh, and because of the way that the blockchain works, it's just very, very easy to deploy highly scalable applications that can process a tremendous number of transactions very, very quickly. There's... There's, I mean, when I use Solana uh, and I think about how it's compared to Ethereum, I'm like, oh, Solana's better. Like, it's just a better experience for me as an end user. I would rather sit down with my mom, Nana Trades, who's on Twitter, as some of y'all are following her already. Uh, I would rather have her use Solana instead of Ethereum because I don't want my mom to have to pay $300 to buy an NFT in gas and transaction fees or pay $30 just to send USDC to BlockFi. Those are the things that upset me on behalf of my mom. And I don't want to have my kids go through this type of stuff either. I want blockchain to be accessible to the average person. I want to be able to sit down and tell them, oh, you can use this blockchain without having to be embarrassed by the fee that it costs to use the blockchain. This is why when I look at Solana and I see a blockchain that is uh, one eighth the market cap of Ethereum, I'm like, oh, well, that should be closer. So, you know, to me, again, not financial advice, I think we've gotten a thousand dollar coin here that's on sale for 180. That's what I think. And then I think about the NFT projects that represent this blockchain that have been there from the beginning and are now focusing their energy on building real life communities, real life people with real life get togethers, with real life merchandise and products that people can wear out into the world and develop real life connections by representing their brand and are benefiting the blockchain by deploying validator nodes to help scale the blockchain and to help secure the blockchain. These are the projects that I want to be a part of, not the ones that are just airdropping me shit coins for the sake of it. And not the ones that are focused on their supply. We got to burn the supply and uh, we got to delist and hold. And I, I don't care about that. I want to know how you are going to be a big deal in 12 months. I want to know what is your long-term strategy 
for having get-togethers with your community. I want to know how are you going to be a brand that is recognizable on a college campus someday. That and and I want to know what are you doing to make the world a better place or make the blockchain a better place. These are the things that matter to me, and that's why when I see things like Genesis Go and what they're doing with scaling the blockchain is just unbelievable. Um, so, you know, I feel pretty strongly about that. Um, some other things that have been going on in the Solana marketplace that I think is just wrong. There's been a lot of infighting with the pesky penguins, apparently. I didn't know about this. Nobody's really talked about it on Twitter until recently. Uh, that The whole mast event where you could unmask your penguin and get a new rarity of a penguin with uh, a demon or a skeleton or something. Some people apparently are upset that that, you know, manipulated the rarity rankings or anything like that. Personally, I think that this was a very wise move because the masked penguins were not very attractive. They were always the ones that were sitting on the floor, dragging the floor down. Uh, I think by getting some cooler penguins into the mix, this is going to be a great long-term play for the pesky penguins. I have no idea why the floor price is four right now, so I bought more. Um, and they've got staking coming soon through Honey DeFi along with Rogue Sharks. That's something that's pretty interesting to me. The idea here, now I, I'm a little worried about this personally because I don't like lending against volatile crypto assets. Um, but the idea here is you could, if you needed quick liquidity and you're sitting on these rogue sharks or these pesky penguins, you could stake these with Honey DeFi. And uh, I, maybe you earn some like shit coin for doing that. I don't really know. Pesky penguins did say that they are coming out with a pesky token. They actually released a Medium article on that last night. It's on their Twitter. I'd encourage you to go read it. They identify how it is not a security based on their interpretation of it. They met with legal counsel uh, to make sure the staking is done in the best way possible, which is really, really cool. I think they're taking a page out of the famous Fox Federation who recently introduced staking, and we saw their supply re reduced to 6%, which is pretty fascinating. I think that's really cool too. So the pesky penguins did, you know, they come out and said they're going to do staking through Honey DeFi. They've got this pesky token that's coming out. Uh, but what's interesting to me with Honey DeFi is this lending concept where you go to Honey DeFi and you stake your penguin and maybe you agree like, okay, this penguin is worth four soul. So they then lend you some soul right there on the spot. Now you could pay it back with a fee to get your penguin back or you, you lose your penguin, but you get the soul. So it's a quick way to get liquidity. Um, I'm going to guess, again, I have not seen this in action. We are expecting Rogue Sharks to deploy their staking today. Um, they were testing it with Rogue Sharks yesterday in, in their DevNet environment. The expectation is that it goes live with Mainnet today. So maybe I'll stake one of my Rogue Sharks just to see what this experience is like. My hunch is that the valuation of the NFT will be less than what the actual floor is today or something like that. So that way... I don't know. We're going to see how it works out, but I, I think it'll be an interesting video for me to record. Nonetheless, that's the idea. So if you get in a real pinch, you need to pay taxes or something like this, maybe you could stake some of your NFTs, get some quick li liquidity, make the money back somehow later through your job or something like that, pay it off and get your NFTs back. That could be the idea there. Um, and maybe that would be helpful for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, that's something that's going on right now. The pesky penguins, for whatever reason, their floor is dropping to four soul. I... I think a lot of people see this as a strongly potential blue chip project. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that they have one of the strongest communities around. And uh, Four Soul just seems way too cheap to me for, uh, you know, such a fantastic project. So I gobbled up some of those um, and, and that was just kind of a no brainer. Now, another one that I want to talk about right here. I think this is so cool. These guys just launched the Stoned Ape Crew. They have been super unfazed by this dip. Here, I actually want to bring them up on Magic Eden so we can actually take a look at the artwork uh, because I think it's just, it's just you know, just the vibe is so cool. So I want to tell you, uh, they did reach out to me before they launched. They DM'd me. They wanted to see, like, if we could talk or something. And I told them, like, man, I'm sorry. Like, I actually don't smoke. It's, uh, you know, it's nothing. I'm, like, I'm not a narc or anything like that. I don't really care if you do or not. Um, I, I'm all for legalization of marijuana and everything like that. I just, I personally don't do it. Um and maybe that's because I got like three small kids and I'm afraid that if I just, you know, get baked or something like that, then I won't be a good dad uh, to watch them. I don't know. I don't know what the, the excuse is that I have. But nonetheless, 
Uh, I just told him, I was like, maybe this isn't a good fit because like it's not something that I can really speak to. And that was a huge mistake. Um, I came out and I apologized and I said, look, I slept on your project. I was really wrong for this. Like after looking at the artwork here, it is actually something that I totally vibe with. Just such this like chilled, relaxed, happy, like just, just feeling in the moment vibe. And I just love it so much. Um, you know, it is unique artwork. It has, uh, unique attributes and, uh, they're doing some really interesting stuff. Their roadmap actually calls for opening a coffee shop, which is something that I really love because I drink a lot of coffee every day. So um, they're going to be implementing a puff token. I don't really know what the utilization of the puff token is or what it's going to be for. But more than anything, the Stoned Ape Crew community is rabid. This community loves this project. They do. They absolutely love it. And the vibes are just so chill. Um, it's way too early to call them like potential blue chip. But you know what I'm feeling like right now? This feels like week one or week two of the pesky penguins. It really does. It, it, this, this community just hits different, man. They're not trying to do pump and dump. They're not trying to do like, like just BS utility. They actually like have an idea, a plan, a roadmap. But more than anything, the community just wants to vibe and chill, admire some cool artwork, admire some apes, uh, admire some donuts. Man, I bought one. wasn't even a rare one, but it was one that I really liked and dropped tinsel on it. No regrets whatsoever. Uh, don't care if this project goes to zero, even though I don't think it will. I don't think this community is going to let it do that. Um, just, man, I, I just feel it with these guys. I really do. Like, you know, when you just... You interact with a community that's just just here just to be a part of a good community and make some friends and talk about NFTs and crypto. That's what this is. The, like there's there's no floor talk here or hold D list or whatever. They're just here to chill and talk about uh, the different roles. So there is that. This is a pretty cool thing. They are implementing a puff token, and there are there's several roles here. The main roles is you've got champion. Oh, I, I can't draw right there without losing the drop down. So there's Champion, and they're going to get, you know, so much puff per day. Then there's the four big roles. That's Farmer, Artist, Businessman, and Scientist. They get twice as much puff per day as the Champions do. Um, they're also more rare. The price disparity between them is not very big. The floor on Champions is 4.2. The floor on Farmers is 5.4. So you're only looking at like a 1.2 soul difference. Uh, between a, a champion and an actual rolled character like a farmer. Um, and then, you know, the max floor of these rolls is the scientist with a floor of 6.3. So uh, the big difference there is a 2.1 soul difference between the champion and the scientist. So, or at least as, as far as the floor goes. So I don't know, man. I really vibe with this project. I didn't at first. I was wrong. I was so wrong. Um, you know, regretted it, apologized for it you know, bought into the Stone Ape crew, super impressed, absolutely unfazed by this dipping business that's going on uh, and just proud of them for what's going on. Now, the other project that I want to talk about that I'm really excited about that's coming up is Bot Borgs. I'm actually going to go to their Twitter account to take a look at this. So I interviewed Bot Borgs personally behind the scenes probably a few weeks ago, and I've been wanting to talk about them for a long time. Do you see this? Do you see what I'm seeing on the screen right now? I'm going to blow it up the full screen. You see this? These dudes are actually video game builders. Like, that's not an exaggeration. When I talked to them, I, I was kind of blown away. They had, I think they said they had eight video game developers, 3D artists, and video game developers on staff. Eight developers. Not marketing people, not roadmap people, game devs. And what are they doing? They're building a game. So there's the dog fighting game. Let's kind of scroll down a little bit here. I want to find the other one. Okay, here's the parkour uh, platforming game. We're seeing a little inside scoop to the platforming game. If you like zoom in, you can see the platforms moving around that they're building. Let's keep going because there's more. Oh, yep, there's, there's the tank game that they're building right here. They've also built a first person shooter. This is for an NFT project that has not launched yet. Can, can I stress that to you right now? Look at what they've done before they've even launched. 
This is insane. This is absolutely bonkers, you guys. Absolutely bonkers. Super impressed. Do you see this right here? There's a little preview of their first person shooter. Do you see the little pesky penguin right there? This is the pesky penguin gun that they've made. The, Y'all, you, you will never see, you, you may never see this again. Just, it, it's not just an NFT project anymore, is it? Like, these are game developers who are developing a game. Heck, if you go to their website, you can, like, preview a first-person shooter game that they've got going on right now. This is amazing. So, I I am, I am always been bullish on builders, and these guys get it. Now, look at, look at what they've got going on here. They're building galleries, casinos, PvP games, parkour platforming, aim trainers, and headquarters. They're building all of it. And they're not just saying they're building all of it. They have literally tweeted all of the previews right there. I, they've got to be losing money. Like, that's the only way thing I can think of. There's no way they're going to build all of this without raising a cent, right? They, they, they've got to be losing money on this. I don't know. Uh, but even even the artwork itself, if you look at their PFP, this is the NFTs that they're going to mint. Those are pretty cool looking, I think. So, I don't know. I really like the bot boards. I really like builders. I'm really impressed with this stuff. Now, one last ray of shining light that I want to talk to you about that makes me very bullish on the Solana ecosystem in general, and that's mobile applications. We know that Phantom is going to be releasing its mobile application in January, and that should get people very excited. But... Uh, there, I did stumble across one mobile app that does have a lot of promise, and that is going to be the Slope Finance mobile wallet. Now, I'm going to be recording my screen here and talking, and you'll see the screen pop up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Slope Finance application. It's going to scan my face to let me in. This is just a burner wallet that I have, Knox.Soul. There's nothing really in it. Uh, but in the third tab here down in the bottom, it's got this browser, and you can explore things like DeFi applications. Here, let me get rid of that stupid... Uh, thing. There's Invictus in Mango, Jupiter, Acumen, Sunny, Saber. Uh, so a lot of DeFi support here, Parrot. Uh, I think Tulip is supported too. Let me scroll. I think it's somewhere in here. Anyways, uh, I'm pretty sure Tulip is supported under DeFi. Then there's also NFTs. Now, in my experience, Solonart like almost never works, uh, but the Solana monkey market does. And let me just show you what it looks like. For example, if I tap on the Solana monkey market, it's going to tell me, you know, this is an untested D app, you blah, 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 blah. I say, I, ex I accept. And it takes me into the marketplace, which, you know, is a pretty good little experience here. If I hide this, you see first right there, when I like when I hit the little hamburger menu, I see that I'm now connected with this wallet and I can explore uh, the Solana monkeys. It loads right up here within the in place browser. And I can now shop for NFTs, you know, right here in the in in this app, which is really really cool. It's just mobile wallet. Now I really wish Solonart worked. It doesn't. I'm going to try and launch Solonart right now and see. It just it's stuck on connect. It never actually connects, which is a huge bummer. If you actually hit the connect button, uh, it it actually takes you to the Slope Finance website instead of actually connecting. Uh, I did get it to connect one time. I don't know what I did differently. Um, but it didn't. But nonetheless, I think this is promise, right? I think this is this is going to be a nice a nice thing at the end of the day um, if we can actually get a mobile environment set up and running. And uh, maybe that you know Solonar and Slope Finance get this fixed, and now we've got a mobile solution that helps us shop for NFTs, you know, right now, which is something that I think we all agree we all need. We all need a mobile solution um, that way we can mint. Uh, whenever we want. Now, Metaplex is supported by that, so um, I'm not sure how you could actually get, like, there's not an actual, like, URL where you could type in a URL and go. Um, if they got Magic Eden support, I think that would be huge. Alpha Art support would be really nice to have. Um, but just being able to shop online, I think, is going to be a really big thing. Look, again, I, I want to circle back and bring this full full circle. I want to I want to stress this. Like, it looks rough out there right now, but we've been through this before. This isn't the first dip. This isn't the first time the marketplace or, or the market cap has fallen down to 500 million. We were there two months ago and sentiment was really down in October. But then you know what happened? It just went back up and it's going to go back down again. This is going to go back up again. This is how crypto markets work. Like they go up really big, then they go down really big, and then they go up really big again. Overall, crypto probably is going to maintain a strong upward trend. And overall, I believe... Solana is going to be the strongest blockchain to use 
so long as you know developers continue to rush to it and so long as we as the solana community can continue to be inviting to outsiders whether that's normies whether that's ethereum maxis or god forbid cardano maxis the we, we got to get new blood coming in because right now what's happening, at least in the NFT space, all we're doing is trading NFTs to each other. That's all we're doing. And a lot of people are dumping these high quality blue chips that are actually building, that are actually making uh, you know quality and, and results for their community and for the Solana ecosystem. People are dumping those to go chase the next pixel project that has a shit token. And those projects are going to go to zero because there's going to be a new fad that comes out in three weeks and everybody's going to go chase that. And you, you, you really need to think about like, what is your real investment strategy here? Are you really just part of the pump and dump? You know, you could make an argument. Are you really just part of the problem? Um, or do you really want to buy into a project that represents Solana in a really positive light? and focuses on community and focuses on bettering the environment and the ecosystem and the blockchain. Um, and then do you want to go and preach that to normies and to other blockchain users? I think that's really the thing is that we, we, have, to, we have to put our faith in high quality projects that are doing something new in the space, that are building something new in the space, uh, that are building strong communities and can attract outsiders to come in uh, because if i were an outsider right now i'd be looking at what's going on with solana nfts going like eh, do i eh, is now the right time maybe i can let them like work this out and then check it out later that might be what i'd, I'd be thinking um so you know I, I you know and i don't mean to come down on anybody here or fud anybody's bags that's not my intention uh, I just honestly want the best for Solana and I want the best for Solana NFTs. And it does break my heart a little bit to see these high quality projects going through, you know, a, a bit of a dip when maybe it's not merited because what I see is these projects that are producing tremendous amount of value. I know that they're going to be just fine. I know that they're going to, you know, take off during the next bull run because, of everybody, especially these new people, these new, this new blood and energy that's coming in with these people who have wanted to be a part of this community for a long time and are now getting into the community and they're excited to be into the community and are contributing immediately. That is really exciting. That is the stuff that gets me fired up because I believe in this com these communities too and I, I think that they're in it for the right reasons. Those are the people who are going to diamond fist it, not only during the dips, but also during the rises, which puts even more upward pressure uh, on, on the rises, which is really, really cool. So, uh, you know, it's it's an exciting time, I think, even, even if it's not an exciting time, because ultimately what's going to happen is paper hands uh, are going to get shaken out. Um, and, and, and that's not to shame anybody for taking profits. It's absolutely good thing to do nobody has ever gone broke taking a profit uh that's an important thing to understand is it is healthy to take profits and it is very healthy and very stimulating to stake those profits with like a validator or DeFi or something like that uh it, it feels really good to make that choice to lock it up and earn a steady yield that way i can't spend it on something that's volatile i highly recommend taking profits and doing things like that not financial advice uh do your own research but it is really exciting to me to watch this new blood. These oh, I see these tweets every day, like, just join the flock, just join the Degeniverse, just got my monkey. Been waiting on this moment for so long. And that's that to me is what it's all about. Um, and I really think that this is where this is where the right people are getting into these projects and they're gonna ride this thing to the moon uh, during the next bull run. So uh, I just I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of people are going to get wrecked by crappy projects, I guess is what it comes down to, um, and, you know, get caught up in pump and dump schemes and think that they're joining a Discord for all the best alpha when really it is is pump and dump schemes um, and maybe the best situation in the long run was going to be to buy something and, like we say, sit on our damn hands, right, and, and just let, let whatever happens happen. Um, that's going to be my thesis. That's going to be how I move, you know, moving forward. And maybe you shouldn't take my advice because, you know, 
Uh, there's been a few projects that we've all gotten wrecked on that we really thought weren't going to going to wreck us. But, um, you know, that's where we are. Uh, you know, if we're if we're drawing a chart, right, if if this is the chart, and it looks like this. You are here. <laughs> this is where you are. Now, it could continue to go down or it could go up. But, uh, you know, it, it, and if we look at charts, like we say, if we zoomed out and we looked at these Solana charts over the long run, look at this right here, you know, <laughs> You right now, you are here, right there at that little dip. You know, it's it feels like a huge dip right now, right? Because we went from 280 down to to 180. That feels like a huge dip. But look, look at what is what it's done over the last year. What if we zoom out another year and predicted where this is going to go? You know, I, again, my thesis is that Solana is is a superior blockchain, and you know maybe it's going to look choppy as hell, but I think it's going to keep going up. And I think it's going to bring the entire ecosystem with it. And I think the NFTs, you know, that represent the the OGs and the people who have contributed to the community and building the blockchain itself uh, and building merchandise that can be recognizable out there in the real world and are having get-togethers and events, I think those are the ones that are going to follow with the blockchain. So that's why my investment thesis stays the way it is. Um it, it, it just feels dark because so many people are looking at, you know, the one month chart right now. And, uh, you know, I get that because, you know, everybody's caught up in the year 2021 where one month turned people from rags to riches, right? Like that's, and it's like, well, one month later, you know, we've got nothing but riches to rags. And, uh, that's, that's how it feels right now. But you just got to remember, like you investors don't invest to make a quick buck. That's just not what happens. And, uh, you know, Ethereum whales and, and Bored Ape whales even didn't become whales because they made a quick buck in a month. These are the people who were mining Ethereum in 2017 when, you know, it was 80 bucks. And they did it for four years. They did it until 2021 when now it's 4,000. They just had to accumulate over years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and then it finally paid off. Because Ethereum was a superior blockchain, still is a superior blockchain compared to most blockchains. They have all the liquidity. They do. Um, Solana is is more performant, and we are in, effectively, its first year, aren't we? So think long-term, years and years and years and years and years. And, and then how can you accumulate Solana? How can you mine Solana? Well, I've got a couple videos on that on my YouTube channel, don't I? How I am mining Solana using my ant miners and how I am earning Solana by staking it, whether in DeFi or on validator nodes. That's that's where I think it all comes from, you guys. So that's that's my take on the market right now. It, it feels bad, but it's not. And there are some high quality projects that are just unfazed by this. Maybe the floor price doesn't reflect that, but the project itself, the developers, and the real community is part of it. They don't care. They know where this is going. They know what Christie's is going to do when the DJ Apes and S&B launches on Christie's. It's going to be amazing. And when quarter one ends of next year, quarter two ends of next year, and all of these D-apps and games have launched on Solana, and more and more normies get into crypto, and they want to use a, a fast, performant, affordable blockchain, which one are they going to go to? It's too easy. I don't know. Not financial advice when it is. I keep saying that because I really mean it. Don't do things because I do it. You know, I take L's just like everybody else does. Um, I'm not a whale. I'm not rich. I don't have a million dollars. So don't, don't delude yourself on that. I'm just an average guy with a YouTube channel. So that's been my take on the market today. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.